Greetings and thank you for joining us here at beautiful Savior Lutheran Church in SeaTac, Washington. We thank you for joining us as we gather to worship our risen Lord and Savior. As we gather today, we continue our series looking at all of the eyes that looked at Jesus as he prepared to go to the cross for us. Today we look at his disciples as they realize that Jesus means that he has done it all. Jesus is the one that has done it all when we fail. We fail to follow him, to do what he says, to stand firm in our faith. The glorious news is that he is there for us. At this time, we turn to him knowing that he is there, especially when we fail to be. With that, let us make our beginning this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. The author and perfecter of our faith. Let us begin this day with a word of prayer. Heavenly and gracious Father, we give you thanks and praise that you are the one and only source of all forgiveness, of all grace, and of all love. We fail to accomplish what you desire of us. We fail to live up to your expectations. But yet, you sent your son, the one who would be scourged for our sake, to be stabbed instead of us. Help us fix our eyes on him, to focus on him in our times of doubt, in our times of denial, and to see him as the source of your love. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we gather for our first song, we sing all creatures of our God and King. At this time, this becomes especially poignant as we remember that God is the one in control. He is there for us no matter what we have in store, and he continues to lead us and guide us to everlasting life. Let us sing our first song. Knowing that God is there for us, controlling everything we see, all that we hope for, and all that we have. Let us turn to him, confessing our sins, seeking that forgiveness that our Father willingly gives to us. We confess together. Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on me. Cleanse my conscience so that I might serve you, not in guilt, but in grace. 
Purify my mind so that I might know you, not in falsehood, but in truth. Sanctify my will so that I might approach you, not in fear, but in freedom. Transform my life so that I might worship you, not in part, but in whole. Always offering all that I am to you as a living sacrifice, Lamb of God, whose blood washes away all sin, have mercy on me. We truly do have a loving Father, an everlasting God, who is there for us no matter what we come to him with. He offers his freedom freely freely for the sake of his son who took upon himself the punishment that was ours, the Lamb of God whose blood washes away all of our sin. It is upon this your confession that I announce to you the forgiveness that God offers. All of your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, let us rejoice in this glorious news, this cleansing that God freely gives to us by singing our next song, I Am Forever Grateful. As we continue with our worship this day, rejoice. Rejoice that we have God with us. He hears our prayers. The book of Psalms is a wonderful place to turn to to hear what God's people have continuously said, praising their God throughout the years. Today we have a responsive reading from Psalm 43 and Psalm 116. We read responsively. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I was overwhelmed by trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, save me. For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death. My eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I love, love the, the Lord, Lord, for he, he heard, heard my, my voice. He, he heard, heard my cry for mercy. Amen. We continue with our reading. Today's reading is from Mark 14, verses 26 to 31, 66 to 72. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written... I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, Even if I all fall away, I will not. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, Today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter insisted emphatically, Even if I have to die for with you, I will never disown you. And the others said the same. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. 
You also were with the Nazarene Jesus, she said, but he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. And after a little time, those standing near said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately, the rooster crowed a second time. Then Peter Peter remembered the word Jesus spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. For our children's message today, I have a question for many of you that are watching at home. Do you ever play the game, Never Have I Ever? The game where you look and say, I have never done fill in the blank. It could be things you're never going to do, things you would always hate, or things that you say, I will never, ever change my mind on this. It could be things like, would you ever eat a bug, like a wiggly, dirty worm? I'm sure many of you would say, no, I would never eat a worm. But then we could ask the question, what if you were offered a million dollars to eat a worm? How many of you would eat a worm then? Or we could ask the question, how many of you say, never, I will never eat broccoli. I hate it. Well, you could look at maybe your older siblings or your parents and how many of them like broccoli? Or maybe there's another food that you said, oh, I don't like that. And it might change over time. Today in our reading, what we just heard was a statement of never, never, ever, never. Peter said, I will never abandon you, Lord. I'm never going to fall away from you. He was sure of that. However, we heard he had a really, really, really bad day. He didn't just fall away and say that he didn't know Jesus once. But in one night, he said it three times, just as Jesus told him he was going to do. We can often say that there's a lot of things we know we shouldn't do, things that we know we aren't supposed to do, and we do them anyways. We end up doing them, and that could be really sad. We could end up being really down because we realize we did the things we said we're never going to do. The good news is Jesus always does what he said he's going to do, and he promised that he was going to do what we couldn't. So today what we're talking about is the fact that even though Peter failed and we fail, Jesus never fails. Parents, if you would like to continue this conversation, talking about the nevers in your life can be a way that as you talk with your kids over the next coming week, continuing on the conversation we're having today, talking about the nevers in your life can be a way of talking about how we often fail and end up sinning against God, bringing about the things that we say, oh, we know we shouldn't, and then do anyways. Let's join together in a word of prayer. Heavenly God, you know all of our needs. You know our failures. You know the nevers that we end up doing. Give us strength, Lord, to come to you as the one who never turns his back. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In his name, amen. This week has, just like the last couple of weeks, been a complete time of utter chaos, especially when you look at the shopping center. When you go around looking at malls and super malls and especially Costco, you see a lot of craziness going on. You see a lot of people that are going through and buying without thinking, buying and storing up. I loved, I've heard it a few times now on the radio, that it's called hamstering, where it's the hoarding up and gathering up everything that they could think of because they're afraid of not having later on. 
reports keep coming in and articles keep going out about people that go saying, I'm not going to join in on the craziness, just to see the bare shelves and the shock and horror, that gut feeling that hits people when they see empty shelves and then they join in that chaos. They join in and what they thought they weren't going to do, they end up having carts full of everything they think that they might need, thinking that come tomorrow, the next day, sometime in the future, it will all be gone. I love that this all has added up to just a few days ago, Costco announcing that it will not accept refunds of many of those items people have been buying in bulk, as now buyer's remorse is setting in, and people are realizing their mountains of rice, toilet paper, dried beans, and shampoo aren't what they need to make it through the next couple of days and weeks and months. That Costco is still open, grocery stores are still there, and life in different ways is continuing. However, Keisha and I had a rather interesting experience where with all of the craziness as we sat back and joined in with many of the people laughing at it, took a moment to look at our own toilet paper supply to realize, ooh, we didn't have toilet paper. And this became then the panic of how do you find toilet paper when you actually do need it? Well, all of this is probably a close comparison, though not quite right, as we look at the distress of the disciples that day. The disciples had just heard as they had their meal that one, one person was going to betray Jesus. And they all took turns going, not I, Jesus. I would never betray you, Jesus. It surely is not me, Jesus. With the answer being given of, absolutely, it's not me, Jesus, right? And there was probably a certain level of, yeah, I know I'm not the bad one here. I know I'm not the cause of the grief that you're going to go through, Jesus. I'm one of the good disciples. But then they go outside after that meal. They go outside and Jesus turns the tables on them yet again, announcing it's not just one that's going to betray, but that each and every one of them would deny Jesus that night. Each and every one of them would turn their backs on him in a time where he needed people the most. That's got to hurt. The shock and awe of this led Peter to say, not me, Lord. I would rather die with you than ever deny you. And the shock is when we read the text, each and every disciple we hear says the exact same thing. Each disciple, when they see Peter's bold statement of, I would go to my death, Lord, to stay firm in who I know you are, they all follow right along. And what they see is their standing stone of faith, knowing that they will never change. They will never go and join in the panic of people deserting Jesus. They will never turn their backs on him when he is in need. Even when he tells Peter that he will deny him three times that night. We have that moment of the disciples having a uh-oh moment. And yet not realizing it, not wanting to admit it, not wanting to go through with it. Jesus even prepares them as he's con he connects it with the prophecy of Zechariah, saying that he will be pierced with the sword as the shepherd, and the sheep will go scattering. That is where the disciples will end up finding themselves this night, the night where their good shepherd finds himself pierced for their transgressions, pierced for the sins of the world after he is handed over to sinful men. And we see that they are in a sense of denial. Just as those buyer's remorse is going around and people are going and panicking and fretting, as we see in grocery stores, we look and see that the disciples were having a time of spiritual remorse, spiritual denial, and spiritually not wanting to hear what they were even saying and how that impacts what they thought and what they think of Jesus. And sadly, we do the exact same thing. We do that same thing when we try and figure out where we stand and how we can continue on standing firm in our faith 
we don't realize that we end up pointing the finger back at us, continually trying to say, this is my bedrock of faith. Here I know I stand and I can do no less based off of my own understanding, based off of my own willpower, based off of my own faithfulness, instead of having it based off of Jesus alone, instead of having it being based off of the one who did what no one else could, to the point that he was completely and utterly alone. This is where we even get this to the point where Jesus twists the reading from Zechariah, adding in that I, I will stab the shepherd. Because in Zechariah, the speaker is God the Father, the Lord Yahweh who is saying that the shepherd will be stabbed by the sword. Now we get the realization as Jesus prepares to go utterly alone, even his own father will turn his back on him. His own father will turn his back on his son for the sake of you, me, his disciples, and the world. This is where we stand as we gather, not based off of where we think we stand, not based on what we think we can do, but off of what Jesus accomplished. Because the sad twist of faith as Peter and the disciples denied what he was saying they were going to do, they were turning the word of truth, the light of the world, God's own word made flesh, into possibly a liar, saying, Lord, your words are not true. You will not, that will not happen. We will stand firm. They're saying that Jesus' prophecy wouldn't happen and come true. When we come, and get, come together and say, oh, it's no big deal, Lord. It's just a tiny sin. Or, oh, I feel really bad for you, Lord. We end up making and trivializing that sacrifice that he has done for us. We end up going into that same spiritual denial that we reject what he says and saying, oh, it's, it's not as big of a deal, God. You just had to pay for some of my sins. Isaiah makes it perfectly clear that he was bruised for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sins. The punishment that we deserved was upon him. And if all of this wasn't enough gospel that is pouring out and coming into our ears, we have a more wonderful news that the disciples missed, that we missed as well. That he told them, even while he's saying, you will deny me and I will be stabbed with the sword. He said, well, when I rise, I will go ahead of you to Galilee, meet you there. The promise that he would rise again and meet with his disciples. What we find after he rised was that he didn't scorn them for their neglect. Point to them and say, you turned your back on me when I needed you most. He forgave them. He forgave them their sins. And in Galilee, he spoke words of forgiveness and restoration to Peter, pointing out that there is nothing that can separate you, whether it's one time, two times, three times, or an infinite number of times we turn our back on him. Jesus is there to say, I took that upon myself while your backs were to me. So do not stand in spiritual denial of the weight of what Jesus has done. He stood where no one else could, and he did it for you. Embrace that fact. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we continue our, on with our service. While there is no physical offering that is being gathered, we want to give that reminder that offering can be gathered online through the mail or through the uh, giving app. Links will be provided, and you can see that link that is up right now for details as to how giving can be done as you continue to help support us in this ministry as we reach out to people now throughout the world. Thank you so much for continuing to bless us, and we continue to keep you in our prayers as well. As we continue on with our service, we confess that God has done it all. He has claimed you and me, and he has united us as his people. Let us confess this amazing truth with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I ask that you prepare yourself at this time as we join together in prayer. For our prayers, the requests that have been turned in so far is that we lift up all of those that are continuing to, serve, to deal with COVID-19, whether that be the economy, that be those that are going and struggling with what does housing look like at this time, doctors, nurses, and staff, and all other ways that this is affecting life. We also lift up this, at this time the Hoagie family as Harris passed away this weekend. We join together in prayer. Blessed Lord, you give sight to the blind. You are the one who has made deaf ears hear. You have made the lame walk, and you bring us to rejoice in that forgiveness of sins that we could never accomplish. Hear us on behalf of your people, both here and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the darkness of sin, when death was all around us, we cried to you, and you were the one who opened our ears to hear your word. You were the one who came to us when we were unable to accomplish anything. We lift up to you, Lord, our thankfulness for this almighty blessing. We'd ask, Lord, that you would continue to look upon us, that you would continue to help us hear your words of forgiveness that we would continue to rejoice in your salvation. Strengthen the faith of all of those who call to you. Let them know that you are never far away and that we can rest all of our cares on you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are burdened, Lord, with many of the needs that are going on around us. There are so many things that we do not understand and do not know how it will continue to impact our life. We lift up to you, Lord, all of those that are sick, those that are injured, those on our prayer list for healing, restoration, dealing with cancer, Alzheimer's, MS, waiting for a transplant, those in need of comfort and care. We lift up to you, Lord, those that are struggling with the repercussions of this new disease. It continues to impact many forms of life, Lord, and we're still learning all the ways that's going to impact us. Let us rest knowing that you are the one in control. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask, Lord, that you would be with all of those that are mourning the death of a loved one. In the midst of death, you are the source of life. Send to them your Holy Spirit, Sustain them. Let them know that they do not mourn as those that do not have hope. But for those that have come to death in Christ, they are merely resting. We lift up to you the Hoagie family as they mourn the death of Harris. Sustain them, comfort them, and let them know your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to be ever mindful, Lord of your promises that we are strong only when we come to you as those that are weak. You are the one who is our strength. Help us remember that Christ is the one that bore it all for us. We join together now as God's people throughout the world, lifting up all of those needs that we have and putting them on Christ. Hear us as we pray together as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare for our final song today, we remember that it is truly only through the Lamb of God, the one who continues on doing what we could not do. He bore our sins and made us into his people, cleansed when we were his enemy. We sing our final song, Lamb of God. Sisters and brothers, rejoice always knowing that Christ is with you. Go forward now in the blessing of our Lord and Savior. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace.